Okay, right now I can start already. Right, so today we're going to discuss about differentiation for paper two. So basically, differentiation for paper two, especially in SPM, you need to focus on two things. One is what's the meaning for tangent, and the second one is what is the meaning for normal. Because in paper two, you will always see something like tangent and normal. Okay, so you have to un understand. Yes. So most of the time, the question will ask you find the equation of tangent or find the equation of normal. So whenever you see the equation, you must link to the equation formula, and then you must when you see the tangent, you have to understand what is the meaning for tangent and what is the meaning for normal. So over here, like I like simplify the meaning. Okay, I will call tangent actually is same gradient. I will call tangent is something like same gradient. With the curve. So, what is the meaning like same gradient to the curve? For example, if I draw a curve over here, I randomly give this curve an equation something like y equals to maybe three x square minus seven x plus one. All right. So, tangent means what? Tangent means I will have a line which only touch the curve at one point. We call it tangent. Okay, let me move this line because this line doesn't touch. Okay, touch the line at one point. All right, good. All right. So, let's say at this point, I randomly give this one at point A. I call this point A as three seven. All right. At point A, so over here, if this line touch this curve at one point, so that means this line actually is tangent to A. So it's something very important that you have to understand. This straight line is tangent to the curve at point A. So let me write something like this straight line is tangent to the curve at point A. Right. This is something is very important. In paper two, so what is the meaning? Now、uh, this is short form for straight line,、uh, SL. All right, this is some something very important that you have to understand. What is the meaning for straight line is tangent to the curve at point A? That means at point A over here, the straight line and the curve they both will have the same gradient. At the point A, the curve and the straight line they both will have the same gradient. All right, so that means. Oh, let me scroll down a bit. Over here, that means at point A, at A, both straight line and curve will have the same gradient. All right, that means what? So let's say let's say I call this line at PQ. Okay, now I want to find the gra gradient of PQ. M stands for gradient over here. I want to find the gradient of PQ. Then, yes, then I have to think how to find the gradient of PQ because the geometric coordinate chapter tell us that if you want to find the gradient, we have to have some formula like this, isn't it? Ah,、uh, gradient equals to y two minus y one over x two minus x one. This is a gradient formula. That means if you want to find a gradient, we must have at least two coordinates. But then over here we do not have p, we do not have q. So how do we find a gradient of the straight line PQ? So because of this sentence, we can find a gradient easily, because we know at point A, both the straight line and the curve will have the same gradient. And In last virtual classroom, actually, we learned how to find the gradient of the curve, isn't it? Because we know gradient of the curve is dy dx. I say dy dx means the gradient function, right? So if we differentiate y, we can get the gradient function of this curve. So let's differentiate this one. So differentiate three x squared. We move the two in front, and then minus one, right? So we got six x. We differentiate negative seven x. We got minus seven. So the gradient function of this curve is six x minus seven. So I I know at point A, both of them will have the same gradient, right? And for the straight line, the gradient is constant. That means in all the point on the straight line PQ, you have the same gradient. 
So over here, I know gradient of PQ is same with the gradient of the curve. So gradient of the curve is 6x minus 7. But then, yes, now you might have one question is, 6x minus 7 doesn't seem like a gradient. Yes, it is not yet a gradient. It is gradient function. So you want to know what is the gradient, you have to substitute the x value over here. So we know at a is when x equals to 3. Because what? I know co coordinate a over here, x is equal to 3. This is x, this is y, right? So I just need to substitute my x equal to 3 into here, then I can easily find my gradient. It will be 6, 3, minus 7, which is 18 minus 7, which is 11. Alright, that's mean at the, that's mean at the point A, the straight line and the curve both will have the gradient 11. So both of them will have the gradient 11. Then you can easily find the equation of PQ, right? But then in this chapter, they won't say something like find the equations of PQ. In this chapter, they will ask you to find the equation of tangent. They will ask you to find the equation of tangent. So when the question says find the equation of tangent, what is the meaning? Mean they want to find this straight line PQ. Because this straight line PQ is tangent to the curve. So whenever they will say find the equation of tangent when the curve touch the straight line at A, or, or we say find the equation of tangent at point A, at A, 3, 7. So we say, ask you to find this equation. So what you need to know is, if you want to find this equation, you need to substitute into the equation formula. So what is the equation formula over here? We learn in geometric coordinate is y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1. So we must have two information in order to use this formula. First, we must have the gradient. Second one, we must have the point. Now we have the point A, 3, 7, which is this one is x1 and y1. I can substitute in and I have the gradient also. The gradient is 11. Then I can easily find the equation. Just substitute everything into here. So we got a point, 3, 7, right? So then that means we can use this formula to find the equation. So it'll be y minus what's in my y1, 7. Equals to my gradient is 11, x minus x1. What is my x1, 3. Then I just need to solve this equation. So y will equal to 11x minus 33 plus 7. Then that means y will equal to 11x minus 33 plus 7. You will got negative 26. Is not mistaken? Yes. So this one is the equation of tangent. Alright. So far, so good. Can you understand it? Or like which part you are like very confused? You want me to like explain again? If no, I'm going to move on. So, over here is so important to understand that at point A, the curve and the curve and straight line will have the same gradient. Alright. So if let's say I give you a point B here. I randomly give a point B point B a coordinate maybe like a uh, 6, 11. So at point A and point B, you know a Actually, you have the different gradient. So over here, PQ do not have the same gradient at point B because you know point B, you point B have its own tangent line. All right. So now, if let's say I give a point B a tangent line. Okay, maybe this line is tangent at point B. All right. Now I give you an assignment. Uh, not, not assignment. I give you a question. Okay, you're trying to find the equation of is tangent you're trying to find the equation tangent to the curve at b so now i want you to find oops yeah straight line i want you to find the equation of tangent tangent at b okay this is your question okay do it right now See whether you can understand or not. Okay, find the equations of tangent at B. So this is a tangent line. This is the tangent line, right? So what you need to do is 
you have to differentiate this equation. Okay, now I already differentiate for you. You got the gradient function. So you need to find at point B, what is the gradient of the curve first? Because we know tangent means the curve and the straight line will have the same gradient at this point, right? So right now, I want you to find the equation of tangent at B. Find it right now. It's not really hard. I think it's quite simple. Oh, oh, oops. Don't fall down. And yes, in this chapter, I think you're not going to use this formula. I think it's almost seldom. Yeah, maybe you will use, but most of the time when I do it, I, I like never use the y2 minus y1 because most of the time in differentiation chapter, the examiner actually want you to understand when you differentiate it, actually you can get the gradient ready. So that means you do not need to use something like y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right. So I guess you can easily get the answer. Yeah, I'm not sure the Michael Thiel is correct or not, but I think it's correct. All right, so it's very simple. So we know we want to find we want to find the equation, so we have to use this formula. Y equals to uh, y minus y one equals m x minus x one. So before that, I have to find what is the gradient for this straight line first. So we know the gradient for this straight line. Okay, I call it gradient of tangent line. Will equals to six x. What is my x right now? It will be six plus minus seven, which is 36 minus 7 is 29. Alright, so now I got the gradient and I got the coordinate. Then I can substitute into the equation. Y minus Y1. Why is my Y1 over here? 11. Equals to 29. And then this is X minus my X1 will be 6. So, yes, you just solve this one. You can get the equation easily. So, equals to 29X. This is minus 6 multiple, this one will be 54, 54 will be 174 plus 11. So therefore, y will equal to 29x, uh, this one will be minus 163. Yep, the Michael Theo got the correct answer. Alright, so far so good. Okay, then let me erase this one. Okay, let me erase this one also. And yeah, this one, this one. Uh, okay, let me erase everything basically. Okay, if you understand about tangent, then now I'm going to explain about normal. Normal is very simple if you can understand about tangent because normal is just a perpendicular to tangent. So, if I got this curve over here, okay, I'm going to draw a tan tangent line here. Randomly draw a tangent line here. All right. So you can find out that this is a point P. Maybe I call it point P. All right, point P over here, the point P is tangent to the curve. Oh no, point P. The straight line is tangent to the curve at the point P over here. All right, I give a point P a coordinate, uh, maybe three, six or so. All right, I give a coordinate. All right, so if I want you to find the equation of tangent, it's very simple, you know, you just need to have this curve gradient and then you, you can easily find the equation of tangent. Now I want you to find the equation of normal. So I'm going to draw a normal line here. Something I know is normal line is always perpendicular to tangent. So I'm going to put a B, P over here. So there are 90 degree over here. So this line, we call it normal line. Normal line means this line actually will perpendicular to the tangent line. Then I give you the equation for this one. Uh, y equals to uh, 3x squared minus 6x plus 7. So I have to leave the classroom now. I have okay, sure. No problem. Yes. See you soon. And actually, I do the screen recorder for this video also. So yeah, you, you can check my YouTube channel. Yeah. Then you can get the video playback. Bye. All right. Let's just continue. All right. So let's say we have. Ah, uh, no, no problem. You can just leave. All right. 
So let's say now we have the curve over here and yes, we got the equation. Okay, this is the equation of the curve. All right, right now, I want you to find an equation of normal. So first thing is you must get the gradient of tangent first, then only you can find an, uh, the gradient of normal. All right, so what I, what I will do is I will differentiate this one, dy dx. All right, when I do the dy dx, I can get the equation of the curve. Means equation of the curve. I can get the gradient of the curve. That means this is 6x minus 6, isn't it? This is the gradient function. So I want to know at p, what is my gra gradient at p? So what I will do is, I got the dy dx, right? dy dx is 6x minus 6. So at p, which is 3, 6. So I know my x equal to 3, right? I just need to substitute my x into that. So I will get 18 minus 6, which is 12. That means over here, my gradient of this straight line will be, my gradient of the tangent line will be 12. Because I say tangent line will same gradient with the curve, right? At point P. All right. If I know the gradient at this straight line, is it tangent line is 12? Then I can easily know the gradient of normal line. Gradient for normal line will be negative 1 over 12. How I know this one? Because normal line is perpendicular to tangent line. And then when perpendicular, we learn about the formula is m1 multiple m2 equals to negative 1. Alright, so if we got m1 means it's a tangent is 12. Then we can find the gradient of normal line easily by solving this equation. So you just move the 12 to the other side, you got negative 1 over 12. So therefore, my gradient of normal line is 12. Okay? Okay. If you understand about this one, then I'm going to move on. So, the question always asks you to find the equation of normal. Find the equation of normal at P. So, over here, you know that if you want to find the equation, you must always use this formula. Uh, let me change some other color. You, you must always use this formula. Y minus Y1 equals to M X minus X1. And then just now I just mentioned, if you want to use this formula, you must have two information, gradient and point. So if I want to find an equation of normal, I just have the, I just have the gradient over here, which is negative 1 over 12. So which is negative 1 over 12. And then they say at P. So I got the coordinate P over here, which is 3, 6. Then fulfill these two conditions, I know I actually can use this formula, which is y minus my y1 will be 6 equals to m. My m will be negative 1 over 12. My x will be 3. So I just need to solve this equation, then I can get the equation of normal. So y minus 6 will equal to negative 1 over 12x minus simplified is plus, sorry, 1 over 4. So y basically will equal to negative 1 over 12x, uh, move plus 6 is plus 25 over 4. Done. This one will be my equation of, of normal. Alright, so far so good. Do you feel like very hard, hard to understand? So over here, what you need to understand is tangent line actually is perpendicular to the normal line. So you always need to, when you see tangent or normal, you always must link to this formula m1 multiple m2 equals to negative 1 because this formula is specially designed for perpendicular. When they are 90 degrees to each other, then you have to use this formula. Okay? So far so good. Any one of you cannot understand about this part? No problem, right? So you must know normal is perpendicular to tangent. Okay? If you can understand this one, I'm going to drop you a random question. Erase everything over here and then I'm going to drop you some random question. Okay, I give you a curve like this. And then I give you a coordinate A. Then I give you some coordinate over here, 2, 7. And then I give you equation of this straight line, 
y equals to maybe 3x cubed minus 7x squared plus 1. Okay, now, A, I want you to find the equation of tangent. Of equation, find the equation of tangent at A. At A. B, I want you to find the equation of normal at A. Alright, so now, do these two questions. I, maybe I give you three minutes to do these two questions. Okay, so I will come back after three minutes. Just try to do this one. It's not really hard. Just try it. So, can you do it? Yes, I see the answer from Michael Theo. Alright. Okay, this is not really hard. So first, you must understand what is the meaning for equation of tangent. Alright, so I'm going to draw a tangent line over here. So, this is a tangent line. Okay, then I'm going to draw a normal line over here also. Which the, I think it will perpendicular to tangent line, but it doesn't touch A, right? So yeah, I'm going to move the line to touch A. Uh, yes. How to move this line? Okay, yes. All right, then this one will be the normal line and tangent line. So basically, first A, he asked you to Find the equation of tangent. So what you need to always do first is, yes, you got the equation of the curve, right? I say at tangent, this one is called tangent line. And this one is called normal line. So I know, I say that at A, the curve and the straight line will have the same gradient, right? So what I do is, in order to find the gradient, means the gradient of the straight line, what I will do is, I will actually differentiate this one. So let me differentiate with different color. Okay. So my dy dx over here 
will be 9x squared minus 14x. Alright, so at A over here, the tangent is very simple. So when x equals to 2, so I will have 9, 2 squared minus 14, 2. Then you just need to use calculator. This is 36. Isn't it? 36 minus 28. I think you got A. Alright, so the gradient of tangent will be A. Alright, then what is the gradient of normal? So gradient of normal, then if you want to know about this one, you just use M1 multiple M2 equals to negative 1 because their, their relationship over here is perpendicular to each other, right? They are 90 degrees to each other, so you can use this formula. So gradient of normal will be negative 1 over A. So that means I know negative 1 over A is the gradient for this normal line. Then you want to find the equation for each other will be very simple. Okay, just let me erase this one. Then I can do my step over here. Alright, so f first is I use y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1. This one, whenever they ask you to find an equation, straight away think about this one. And then you need two information in order to apply this equation. First is the gradient. So gradient of tangent is 8. Then you need a coordinate, a point, which is 2, 7. Then you, this one is always x1 and y1. Then you just substitute in. So what's my y1? Will be 7. What is my gradient? Is 8. What is my x1? Is 2. Then y will equal to 8x. This one will be minus 16. Minus 16 plus 7. Minus 16 plus 7 is plus 9. Alright, then we done this part. Then we move on to normal. Uh, Alright, so B. They ask us to find the equation of normal right at a so same thing when you see equation first thing linked into your mind will be y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1 and then you want to use this formula you must have two information which is gradient and the point what is the gradient in this case negative 1 over a and then what is the point same point 2 7 so you want to find this equation is very simple just y minus 7 equals to m x minus x1 will be 2. Alright, this is 2. 2, okay. Then, this is y. Okay, I moved the negative 7 here to become plus 7, but I move it later. Sorry, here you have a bracket. So this is negative 1 over x minus this one. Negative, multiple negative will be positive. So we plus 1 over 4. 1 over 4 plus 7, 1 over 4 plus 7, you will have 29 over 4. Alright, so this one will be equation of normal. Alright, so far so good. Can you understand that? How to find the equation of tangent and equation of normal. Sometimes the question, question actually will ask you to find the coordinate also. But then, if you understand about this one, I think you have no issue for differentiation in paper 2. Alright, so, so far okay? If okay, we're going to go to the partial question. Okay, then we go to the first partial question over here. Do you, all of you can see this question, right? Okay. First, in this question, he said a curve with the gradient function 2x minus 2 over x squared have a turning point. All right, so I say whenever you see turning point, or stationary point or maximum point or minimum point first thing come into your mind should always be dy dx equals to zero because whenever how the curve turn at the maximum and minimum they will have the gradient equals to zero both of them will have the gradient of zero. So when you see all these words, so I hope first thing come into your mind is dy dx is equal to zero. So over here, it say have the turning point at k a. So first it asks you to find the values of k. So turning point first thing come into my mind will be dy dx equals to zero. 
All right, and then gradient function. So over here, the first question, when I say gradient function, a lot of students will make a small mistake is they thought this one is y, then, and then they straight away go to differentiate this one, and then they spend a lot of time to like answer part A. When I say gradient function, first thing come to your mind is this is already dy dx. You no need to differentiate this one. Okay, so gradient function is 2x minus 2 over x squared. Alright, so what information I know is, I know this one actually is turning point. The k8 over here is turning point. Alright, so I know dy dx will equal to 0 at k8 because this one is the turning point. Okay, so I want to find k is easily. I just need to substitute my 2x uh, minus 2 over x squared, which is my dy dx. When equals to 0, when my x equals to k. Because this is x, this is y, right? So I just substitute 2k minus 2 over k squared equals to 0. So 2k equals to 2 over k squared. So basically, k cubed will equals to 1. So therefore, k will equals to 1 also. Yes, you can easily get this one. I think it's one or two mark question only. Alright, can understand or not? So first, you must understand gradient function over here mean dy dx. So straight away write down the gradient function the question gives you. Second, you have to understand turning point mean dy dx equals 0 because turning point, same meaning with maximum and minimum point. So you have to understand dy dx will equal to 0 at this turning point. Alright, then the third one, in order to answer this one, you have to understand x actually equals to k because this coordinate is x and y, right? So means at the turning point, x equals to k and then you solve it, you can easily get k equals to 1. Then you got 2, two mark, I guess, because it's quite simple. B, let me use different color for B, just to not so confuse you together. Right, B over here. Determine whether the turning point is maximum or minimum. Alright, in order to def determine whether it is maximum or minimum, because what I say is turning point, it can be maximum or minimum. But we do not know whether it's minimum or maximum until we differentiate second time. Okay, until we differentiate second time. So if if you will got minimum, you differentiate second time d2y dx squared. Minimum, you have got the value is bigger than zero, which is the meaning you got positive value, means it is the minimum point. If you differentiate second time, you got less than zero. That means your value is negative value. That means it is maximum point. So remember, when you differentiate second time, is less than zero, means it is maximum. If you differentiate second time, you got bigger than zero, which is minimum point. This is something you have to remember because in your formula list, it won't give you something like this. So last time, how actually I remember is positive, right? Positive is smil smiling face, right? So if positive is smiling face, you will got minimum. If differential second time, I got negative value, which is set face. Do you see set face here? So this one will be maximum. This is how I remember last time, but uh, of course, you can find your own way to remember. Okay. Then what? Then, over here, if you understand about this one, I'm going to differentiate second time. So I write, write out my dy dx first is 2x. And then I change this one into indices form, which is we know this is 2 over x power of negative 2. Why do we know this is x power of negative 2? Because this, is, this one actually is negative 2 multiple 1 over x squared, right? And 1 over x squared, we can actually change this one to x power negative 2. This is indices. Alright, I hope you understand about this. Then I'm going to differentiate second time. d2y dx squared, I will got what? I differentiate 2x, I got 2. I differentiate this one will give me positive 4x minus 3. Because move the negative 2 in front and then minus 1, right? So negative 2 multiple negative 2 give you positive 4. And negative 2 minus 1 give you negative 3. Then I write it back in the fraction form, which is 2 plus 4 over x cubed. This is my d2y dx squared. I mean, I differentiate second time, I got this one. 
All right. So over here, I'm going to determine this coordinate, whether it's maximum or minimum. So what I need to do is, I, of course, I have to write down the coordinate. So I, I write down the coordinate is at turning point. Turning point. I write short form here. Of course, in the exam, you don't write short form. This is K is 1, right? 1A. So what I will do is, I always substitute the X value into here. It's 2 plus 4 over 1 cube. Which is, you will got, is 6. 6 is bigger than 0. So, is it bigger than 0? I say bigger than 0, you will got minimum. Therefore, uh, therefore, the turning point, the turning point is a minimum point. Alright, everything is short form, huh? but in the exam, you have, make sure you write in the full form. Alright. Alright, yeah. No problem for Aliang. <laughs> yeah, I hope you can still join in and understand what I'm saying. All right. So far, so good. So this is how we determine whether it is minimum or maximum. It's not really hard. So if you see the question ask you determine whether it's maximum or minimum, first thing coming into your mind is you have to differentiate it second time. All right. And last one is ask you to find the equation of the curve. You want to do this part. I hope you are a form 5 student. If you are form 4 student, yeah, I'm sorry for that because you have to understand if you want to find the equation of the curve, you have to integrate gradient function. Y will equals to integrate gradient function. So you must integrate your dy dx, then you can get the equation of the curve. All right, if I, I think some, some of you might be from 4 students, so you just listen first. When you go to form 5, you will understand what is integration. Alright, so over here, C, he asked me to find the equation of, okay, this one. So let me like erase some, some of it. Okay, I'm going to use this part to do, and let me change other color. Maybe I change to green color. Okay, so I'm going to do my C, eh? Why is still change to the green color? Okay, I'm going to do my C here. Uh, let me erase this one also. Okay, C. I want to find the equation of the curve. So, just now I just mentioned, in order to find the equation of the curve, one of the ways is you straight away integrate the dy dx. Alright, so what I will do is, I know in order to get y, I must integrate dy dx. Alright, so over here, I got my dy dx, which is 2x minus 2 over x squared. So I'm going to integrate this one in order to get the equation of the curve. So how to integrate is simple. I hope you, you are still remember the integration law. All right, integration law is something like this. The power plus one divided by total power. So this one is power one, right? So I will got one plus one. This is two, right? Divided by total power, all right? This one, if I write in the indices form, this one actually is negative 2, x power negative 2, right? So, now, I power plus 1, x negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. So, divided by negative 1. Always power plus 1 divided by total power. And remember, when you integrate this one, do not have the limit. Okay, so you remember you must plus c. Alright, because you might have some constant value here after you differentiate, it is missing. Alright, so I'm going to simplify this one. So simplify this one. So y will equal to x squared. Negative and negative, I got positive. So I plus, this is x power negative 1, right? 2 over x plus c. Alright, in order to get c, I must have the coordinate, which is I have the coordinate already. So I will write at 1, 8. So I can substitute the 8 into the y and 1 into the x. 2 over 1 plus c. Then I can easily get my constant c. This is 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 5. So therefore, the equation of the curve will be y equals to x squared plus 2 over x plus 5. Okay, this one is the equation of the curve. Yes, so... 
when you see the question like this, C asks you to find the equation of the curve. You must understand that when you integrate gradient function, you can actually, you can get the equation of the curve. But some students might ask, if I differentiate this curve, can I get back the same, va same dy dx value? So I'm going to show you it is the same. All right, so now I got this equation. I try to differentiate this equation. So I write in the indices form first. Y equals to x squared plus 2x minus 1 plus 5. So I differentiate this one. dy dx. First, move the 2 in front, minus 1, right? 2x. This one will be minus 2x minus 2. And then 5, you differentiate, is gone. So we got 2x minus 2 over x squared. We check whether this one is the gradient function on the top or not. So let's move up. 2x minus 2 over x squared. So it's exactly the same. So you can double check your answer using this method. If you got the equation of the curve ready, you can try to differentiate, see whether you get back the same gradient or not. If you got the same gradient, means your answer is correct. Okay? All right. I hope you can understand. If you not understand, you can raise hand. I hope you see the raise hand button in your, in your right hand, in, in the top of your right hand. All right. Then, let's move on to the second question. Alright, in this question, I hope you can see the question. Okay, he said the gradient function is hx squared minus kx, where h and k is a constant. Constant, in last video I explained, constant actually just means some number. Alright, the curve has a turning point. See, turning point again. So when you see turning points, first thing come into your mind is turning point. First thing coming to your mind is dy dx is equal to zero. Alright, at this coordinate. Alright, and then the gradient of the tangent, the gradient of the tangent to the curve at the point x equal to negative one is equal to a. So basically, you want to find the value h and k. So when I see two unknown, the first thing coming to my mind is I understand actually I will need I will need two equations. So I, got, I can form one equation easily using the turning point. I can form the other equation easily by using the gradient of tangent. Because I said gradient of tangent means same gradient at certain point, the curve and the tangent line. They have the same gradient, right? So see how I do, how I get this fine mark. So first thing is, of course, I write down the gradient function. So gradient function is dy dx. So whenever you see gradient function, you must understand it's dy dx. All right, so over here, I know my dy dx will equal to zero at this coordinate, three, negative four. Most of the time when you difference, when dy dx, only x value is important. Y value, sometimes we don't use it unless it asks you to find the equation of the curve, which is the part B. All right, so what I will do is hx squared minus kx. No need to differentiate this one. One more time, okay? equals to zero when x equals to three because my x equals to three, right? So I substitute into here, I will got nine h minus three k equals to zero. Then I'm trying to like make one of it become the subject because later I can substitute. So three k equals to nine h. So I know my k actually equals to three h. I'm gonna call this one number one because later I need to substitute in to get the, uh, to get the h and k, all right? Then what? then I should have second information, which is the gradient of the tangent to the curve at point x equal to negative one is a. So first thing is over here, I know my dy dx will equal to a when x equal to negative one. All right, you must understand what is the meaning for gradient of tangent. That means you have a curve, you have a straight line. Ah, oh, no, my straight line is bad. Yeah, you will have the straight line will touch the curve at one point, and then this point x is negative one, and then this this line this gradient is a. So that means at this point the curve will have the same gradient also. That means the curve at this point the gradient is a also because I say tangent between the curve and the straight line will have the same gradient. So what I will do is h my x equal to one right, so one square minus k one equals to a, which is h minus k equals to a. I'm going to call this one number two. And I can get h and k easily by substitute one into two. Substitute one into two. 
So H minus, what's in my K? 3H equals to 8. So negative 2H equals to 8. H equals to negative 4. Simple. Then you want to get K, substitute back this one back to number 1. So substitute H equals to negative 4 into 1. So basically, K will equal to 3, negative 4. K will equal to negative 12. Done. 5 mark. Okay, it's not something like impossible to understand. So, of course, first thing you must understand what is the meaning for turning point. After that, you must understand what is the meaning of gradient of tangent. If this question, the examiner want to trap you, it actually can change this one to gradient of normal. Then I guess a lot of students will, will get wrong for this one. Okay, let's say I change it myself. Just make you can understand this one further. Okay, I change red color maybe. Okay, let's say I change this, these words to normal. Then, how to solve this question? If I change the tangent to normal. So now, I know the gradient of normal equals to 8. This is not dy dx. Because this one dy dx equals to 8 because it's tangent. So what I need to do is, I will do 8 minus a uh, multiple gradient of tangent will equals to negative 1. So gradient of tangent equals to negative 108. Alright, you must find back the gradient of tangent first. Then after you find back the gradient of tangent, then only you write dy dx equals to negative 108. Then only you solve it. Then you will got different answer. Okay, this is what happened if the examiner trying to trap you change this one to normal. Because a lot of students might straight away put dy dx x still equals to 8 but it is not equals to 8 when it is normal please understand this one is very 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 important all right then the second part find the equation of the curve i i just told you if you want to find the equation of curve in this chapter first thing you must understand in order to get y you must integrate dy dx you must integrate the gradient function all right so over here i'm going to erase this one I hope you understand. If you are not understand, please raise your hand. Okay. Yep. Oh, what happens to all this number? Please missing, 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 missing. Okay. Let me erase everything here. Therefore, I get have more space to write. Okay. So now B, I want to find the equation of the curve, right? So first thing coming to my mind is, I need to get y, I need to integrate. Oh my god, why is my h just now? <laughs> Anyone know why is my h and k just now? Uh, oh my, it's okay. I just <laughs> undo back. Uh, I think it's over here. My h is negative 4 and my k is negative 12. <laughs> Let me write it down. dy dx is negative 4 and negative 12. So negative 4 x squared, k is negative 12. So negative, so it will be minus negative 12 x. So basically you have got negative 4 x squared plus 12 x. Alright, ah, then now I can erase it. Okay, if you got any problem, just let me know. Okay, then, ah, let me erase this one. Okay, then we can start to integrate. So, we know in order to get y, we must integrate dy dx. Okay, here, okay, so, so we can integrate this one, negative 4x squared plus 12x. So, it's very simple to integrate if you understand about integration law. I say integration is power plus 1, 2 plus 1 is 3, divided by total power. Alright, this is 12x. This is power 1, right? 1 plus 1 is 2 divided by total power, which is 2. Alright, and then remember always need to plus C because your integrate here have no limit over here. Sometimes you have 0 to 2, something like this. This is the integrate. You have the limit, then you no need to plus C. Alright, then you, the next mission is you, you know that you have to find C. So you need to have the coordinate. So I'm going to write at what coordinate is it? is actually passed by the coordinate as 3, negative 4. So it's 3, negative 4. So I can easily get this one. Of course, I know I can simplify this one becomes 6. So yeah, I want to find C. So negative 4 
equals to negative 4. This is 3 cubed over 3 plus 6 3 squared plus C. Of course, you, if you have calculator, it will be better for this one. Let me simplify. Simplify is 2. This is 9. 9 is negative 36. This is plus 954 plus C. So I settle this one. I think it's 18. It is 18 minus 18 minus 22. I hope my calculation is correct. If wrong, just let me know. So therefore, I can get the equation easily. So y will equal to negative 4 over 3 x cubed plus 6 x squared minus 22. This one is the equation of the curve. Done. So, so far so good. It's 7 o'clock already. Any questions so far? Or some students feel like very confused, very headaches, or like cannot understand at all? Can just let me know if you like oh, find that this past year question is so hard. But because differentiation is sec uh, paper two, sometimes you have six marks, sometimes you have eight marks. So I will say it's quite important and it's not like very hard to score. So you just need to understand some basic skill about how to differentiate and how to integrate. Most of the time in this part, they won't give you something like very hard to differentiate, have to use quotient rule or something like that. Most of the time it give you quite simple. And then yeah, same to the integration. So I think this part is quite easy to score, but I'm not sure why a lot of students actually give up on this part. They, they find, it, find out the differentiation is so hard. So I hope, yeah, this one hour actually can help you understand better about how to solve the paper too. I'm going to move on to question number three before I, I know that actually all of you have no problem. So is all of you okay? Or you can tell me if you are not okay. Okay, silent I mean means okay, right? <laughs> okay, good, if you're okay. Then we're going to move on. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next question. Okay, this question actually is quite similar. Okay, first thing is, read the question first. The curve, he gives you the equation of the curve, y equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 1. Pass through the point, a and have the two turning point P and Q. Alright, that means over here I know my turning point. I will have P and Q. And then at both of these points, dy, dx will equal to zero because I said turning point P dy dx will always equal to zero. And then it's good enough it give at least it give us coordinate P. I'm going to write three one. But we do not have Q, so I put the X, Y for it. Alright, this is what I, I always will do when the question comes to me. Alright, first he asks you to find the gr gradient of the curve at A. So it's very simple. Oops. Uh, yeah. And then you have one more coordinate, which is A, which is 2, 3. Most of the time when I answer the past year question, I mean I answer the exam question, I will write out all the information I have. Then I have, uh, clear, I have the cl clearer pictures on how to solve this kind of question. So over here. When I see the word gradient, first thing coming to mind is dy dx. So I have the y equals to x cubed minus 6x squared plus 9x plus 1. So first thing is, I will differentiate this one. My dy dx will equal to 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. So at a, at a means the x is equal to 2, two right? At a, we know the x actually equal to 2. So what I will do is, when x equal to 2, my dy dx, which is my gradient function, which is my, which is my gradient, because it asks you to find the gradient of the curve at a. So 2, so it's simple. 3 multiple 2 square minus 12, 2 plus 9. So this is 2 square, right? 2 square, 4, 4 is 12. So 12 minus 24 plus 9, which is negative 3. All right, so you got all three marks for a. You just need to understand how to Dif differentiate and then after that you have to understand what is the meaning of a you're not going to use the y value of a you only use the x value all right then you can easily get three mark for this one all right then we go to b uh, let me change the other color for b maybe use back black color okay b 
He asks you to find the equation of normal to the curve. This is what we practice at the beginning, right? So at A, so first, you know at A, this one, negative 3. When dy dx equals to negative 3, you know actually this one is the gradient of tangent. Because gradient of tangent is same gradient with the curve, right? So this, if this is a gradient of tangent, I'm going to call it gradient of tangent equals to negative 3. Now I want to find the gradient of normal in order to find the equation of normal. So I know that gradient of tangent multiple gradient of normal will equal to negative 1. So my gradient of tangent is negative 3. So I multiple gradient of normal will equal to negative 1. So my gradient of normal uh, is normal equals to 1 over 3. Because negative and negative, we got positive. Alright, I say find equation, we must use this formula. y minus y1 equals to m x minus x1. And then I also say in order to use this formula, you must fulfill two conditions. You must have gradient and you must have point. We have gradient, which is 1 over 3. We have point, which is point A. What is point A? 2, 3. Alright, then I just substitute this one. I say this one is x1 and y1, right? So y minus y1 equals to m. x minus x1. I just solve this one. I can get the equation of normal. So y minus 3, I move to the other side with plus 3. So I'm going to plus 3 later. Though this one will be minus 2 over 3. Then I plus 3, right? Change to same denominator will be plus 9 over 3. Then I solve it. So y will equal to 1 over 3x plus, oh, what happens to my, okay, here will be plus 7 over 3. Then I'm done. This one will be the equation of normal. So far so good. Any question? No. Yes, this is how we find the equation of normal. So first is when you got the dy dx equal to negative 3. You have to make sure yourself can understand what's the meaning dy dx of negative equal to negative 3 at a. That's mean what? That's mean if I sketch out something, that's mean at a over here, the curve and the straight line will have the same gradient, which is negative 3. So this is also the gradient of tangent. Then equation the question asks you to find the equation of normal, which is 90 degree to this one. If this line equals to negative 3, we know this one will equal to 1 over 3, the gradient. Alright, so you have to understand what is the meaning for normal and tangent and all that. If not, you, cut, you, you couldn't solve this kind of question. Alright, C. Alright, C. He asks you to determine... Okay, find the coordinate of Q and determine whether Q is maximum or minimum. Okay, this one four mark, so I'm going to take some time for this one. Okay. But let me erase this one first. I hope you understand. Okay, I just erase all this because I think it's not going to use it. Just remember the formula for normal. Why can't, oh my God, my question. Okay. Now C. I want to determine whether Q is maximum or minimum, and then I need to find the coordinate of Q. So I will use the information I have over here. So for part C. So I know dy dx will equal to 0, because I tell, the question actually told us that P and Q is a turning point. So dy dx equals to 0. So what's in my dy dx just now? We have 3x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals to 0. Because this is dy dx, right? Well, it equals 0. So, of course, I know everything and divide by 3. So, I make my equation look simple a bit by dividing everything by 3. Alright, then what I need to do is I just need to factorize out this one. Okay, I just need to factorize this one. So, what I will have is... Uh, what happens to my tablets? I'm so sorry. Is it? Oh... I think because of the sc scoring thing, right? Uh, let's see, let's see why he... Uh, so I s s factorize this one. Uh, let me give you better vision. All right, so I will got x. x, this one obviously is 3, 1, minus and minus. So x will equal to 1 or x will equal to 3. 
But the problem is I do not know which one is Q and which one is P until I take back my coordinates over here. He gives he give us that the P what happens to my things over here? Or uh, wait, got some disturbed line over here. Let me erase it. What's my coordinate P again? Sorry for that. Three one. So I know the coordinate P have the x equal to three. So I will check. This one is 3, so I know this one actually is for P. So the other one, obviously this one is for Q. So I can get the coordinate Q easily. I write when X equals to 1. I want to find what is the coordinate. I must have X and Y, right? So I have the equation Y on the top there. So Y will equals to 1 Q minus 6, 1 square plus 9, 1 plus 1. So basically Y will equals to... 10 uh, minus 5 is 5. So therefore, coordinate Q is 1 and 5. Not really hard. So what you need to do is, first thing you understand, dy, uh, turning point mean, different, differentiation will equal to 0, and then you put your dy dx equal to 0, you will get two coordinates. The harder part is you have to decide which one is P and which one is Q. So you have to re refer back to your coordinate. Then you, if you get this one is P already, the other one sure is Q. So after you got it already, you got X equals to 1, substitute back into your Y equation, then you can find a Y. Alright, then what? Then he asks you to determine whether this one is maximum or minimum. So when determine whether it's maximum or minimum, first thing come to your mind is you must know this one, you have to differentiate the second time. D2Y and DX squared do this one. So I'm going to differentiate second time. So d 2y dx square. This this one is my dy dx, right? So I differentiate second time. I will got 6x minus 12. Alright, simple. So when x equals to 1, I will got 6 minus 12, which is negative 6. I say when you differentiate, the value is less than 0. Is maximum or minimum? If d2y dx square less than 0 means this is maximum. Done. Alright. So means of course you in the exam you have to write properly properly. Uh, means okay, when d2y dx square less than zero means the coordinates of the q is maximum. This is what you should write in your exam. Alright. I think you should have no problem. This is a 10 mark question in 2010. So I would say differentiation is quite important because you can easily get a loss of mark in paper too. Alright, uh, my laptop have almost run out of battery. So I'm going to faster finish the last question and then we're going to end the class today. Alright, the last question is over here. Wow, this is... Okay, this question actually is quite similar with question number 3. So I want you, you all to try this question. I will give you 5 minutes to try out this question because it's exactly the same with the question number now, uh, the question just now. Okay, give you five minutes to try. Please do it right now. Have any question want to ask me? No, right? Yes, what is your question, Michael? Can upload or what? Yes, you can upload, but okay. I try to make you able to upload. Do you, do you see the file button on your left hand side on the top of your left hand side? You try to press the file button, and then you press the upload from desktop. Can you do it, Michael? It's grey out. Okay, maybe I need to give you some setting thing. Okay, right now I think you can press already, isn't it? You're trying to press? Still grey out? Okay, you're trying to upload. I hope it won't take too long because I f forget to bring my charges for my laptop. So it's, I think it run out of battery very soon. <laughs> so. 
Yes, please upload it. Yes, for question number four, you you're going to try try out now. Yes, do it as soon as possible because my laptop is run out of battery. Anyone else have the problem want to ask me? Never mind. I think I show you on Sunday. Sure, sure. You can show me on Sunday class. Yes, uh, for those students who can understand Mandarin, mean Chinese, I will have another class on Sunday, which is, uh, is not mistaken, it's 7.30 to 8.30. All right. Yeah, because in that class, actually, I will teach in Chinese. Mean Mandarin, and then I think I will use back the same question. Yes, so for those students who already like know how to do all these questions, maybe on Sunday you can upload some question, and then I try to guide you from there. Okay, so let's end this one by solving this question. All right, so first thing is. Okay, I have the equation, and then it give it tell it tell me that this equation actually pass through a point A and have two turning point P and Q. So first thing is, I will write I will write down my turning point is P and Q. I got two turning point when dy dx equal to zero. P is what is P? P is three one. Oh my God, this question is like exactly the same. <laughs> okay, so this is dy dx equals zero at these two coordinate, and then I got the coordinate A is two three. Wait, is it the same question? Yes, it's the same question. I'm not sure. Oh, it's just the same question. I'm so sorry. Yes, I thought it's a different question and I realized they are exactly the same. All right, then I think that's all for today's class. Yes, any question you can like ask, ask me in my Facebook page. And yeah, or you can, yes, any problem for Alia? Sir, I still have no about where have sales the past year question. I calculate already for from four question only for past year question follow which chapter. I think now popular actually selling the book also. I think I show you all in the last in the last video. Let me find whether I have the book right now or not. Yeah. Is this book? Yes, you can get this book in popular. Yes, and then this book is I think it's all the past year question from 2006 to 2013 and then they divide it like chapter by chapter. So if you are from four student actually you can easily get like all the from four chapter from the books. Okay, Alang? All right, then I'm going to end this class. So you have any Question or problem? Just post me questions, uh, or just post me the comment on the on my Facebook page. All right. See you guys soon next week. I think next week we'll have the same virtual class also in the same time. If got any, ah, uh, I will post. I will post it in my Facebook page also. So I I couldn't confirm here, but mostly the same. All right. See you guys soon. Bye bye.